There are many ways to measure the health of an economy, one of them being gross domestic product, more widely known as GDP. Gross domestic product is the total market value of all finished goods and services sold in a country within a period of time, usually within a year. Imagine a warehouse that sells all kinds of goods, like clothes, fruits, and services like healthcare, haircuts, etc. A country is just like this warehouse. All of the goods and services that are sold within a year add up to the country's GDP in value. It is a measure of how efficient your warehouse is. But of course, raising a country's GDP is not that easy. There are conditions to what contributes to the GDP. First of all, the items sold have to be produced within the same year which means that if you build a house this year and sell it the next year, it will not count towards the GDP. One aspect of determining a country's economic health is more than just how much they can sell. It is a cycle of knowing what the citizens need, producing the required product or services as efficiently as they can, and selling it to them. GDP is a measure of how well a country sees through this big picture. In addition to that, the materials purchased to make a product that is to be sold to consumers do not count towards the value of the country's GDP. The only exchange or sale that counts is the very final product sold to the end consumer. When a consumer buys an egg, say, to make an omelette, that egg is a finished product. The sale of that egg counts towards the country's GDP. However, let's say there's this bakery that sells cake. The finished product here is the cake that's sold to consumers, and to make this cake, the bakery needs flour, eggs, and butter. Even though this bakery is a customer to the suppliers from whom it buys these intermediate goods from, these purchases do not count towards the GDP. In other words, our GDP supermarket is like a real supermarket. At the GDP register, we ring up the eggs sold to consumers and the cakes, but we don't ring up the eggs the baker used to make the cake. This is because these goods are not a finished product. You can't go on adding up all the market value from a chain of production and lump it into the GDP. But what can a country's government do to help the GDP? Now, you've probably heard of government subsidies, right? So, what are they for, and how does it help the GDP? It goes like this. Let's take the example of my cake company again. Some days, sales may look bad, and I may not be making as much profit as I need to, so I struggle to acquire the ingredients I need to produce more cakes. Low production means less sales, and less sales means lower GDP contribution. When the government subsidizes my company, it means that they are supporting me with the funding to get the ingredients I need. The more they subsidize my company, the easier it is for me to bake more cakes to sell. More cakes sold implies more GDP for the country, and everyone wins. Furthermore, only goods that are produced within the country count towards that country's GDP. For example, if you buy an imported item, your purchase will contribute towards that country's GDP. The same applies if your country exports their goods. The sales would then count towards the GDP of your country. This is easy to remember since this comes from the word domestic in gross domestic product. Now, let's have a recap. A country's GDP, or gross domestic product, can be a measure of a country's economic health. It is the total market value of all finished goods and services sold in a country within a year. The products have to be finished goods sold to customers, be it domestically or internationally. A finished good or service is one that will not be sold again as part of some other good. If a good isn't bought and sold in a market, then it's not typically counted in GDP. To answer why not, counting the market value of, say, all the breakfast cereal produced in the US is easy, at least in principle. 
just add up the price every time a box of cereal is sold. Since market prices are observable, every statistician who counts carefully will more or less come up with the same number. But without market prices, there's no easy or agreed-upon way to calculate how much a good is worth. Polar bears, for example, aren't counted in GDP. The statisticians and economists who calculate GDP have nothing against polar bears. The problem is that there's no easy way to calculate how valuable polar bears are. Just because GDP doesn't include polar bears doesn't mean that we can't love polar bears. And if polar bears were included in GDP, that wouldn't require us to love polar bears either. Ultimately, GDP is just a number, but it's for sure a useful number. In essence, a country's GDP is a measure to help determine how well its government can recognize its citizens' needs and fulfill them using the resources they have at their disposal.